Welcome to the Blessings of Jesus. In today's message, Multiplying Mercy, Dr. McLuhan teaches how giving mercy to others increases our capacity to experience more of God's mercy. One of the worst fears young drivers have is being pulled over by police. As soon as you see those lights and you hear the sound, your heart begins to race. I was 18 years old when I came to America. Not long after being here, I had my first encounter with the American policeman. The first uh, thing the man said to me was, where are you coming from and where are you going? I was so shook up, I hardly knew how to speak or what to say. I, I didn't know the city very well. I didn't even know where I'd come from, <laughs> let alone where I was going. So I just tried to say something in the strongest South African accent I could produce at that time and claim ignorance. And it worked, and all I received from that officer was a strong warning. And on that day, I experienced mercy because I did not receive the ticket that should have been given to me. I was glad the cop who pulled me over was a merciful man. I'm even more grateful that the mercies of the Lord exceeds the mercy of any official anywhere around the world. The Bible says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, O Lord. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. Every day, the Lord releases upon his children fresh mercy for living. I'm so glad for the mercies of the Lord upon my life, upon my family, upon my children, upon my grandchildren, upon our church, upon our friends, upon people here in this room who have experienced an abundant flow of the mercy of God. So just take a moment with me and express how thankful you are to the Lord for the fresh mercies that he gave us today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that your mercies are tender. Thank you that they are fresh. Thank you that they are everlasting. We bless you today. Encourage us as we hear this word. Now, mercy and grace are in many ways the opposite sides of each other. Grace is receiving the goodness of God that we don't deserve, and mercy is not receiving judgment or punishment from God that we do deserve. The fifth blessing that Jesus offered to his followers is one of the blessed, best blessings that we can have. Jesus said, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 7. What does it mean to be merciful? It is the ability to show mercy to others in the light of the great mercy that has been shown to us. The more mercy we give, the more mercy we receive from our loving Heavenly Father. Aren't you so glad? Jesus demonstrated mercy on the cross when he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they are doing. What a merciful statement that was. Uh, some religions talk about God as being merciful. But very little mercy is actually shown to the people who need it the most. Unlike Jesus, who stopped stone throwing to a woman, some people continue to throw stones at people who are desperately in need of mercy. Religions apply law without grace and without mercy. And I'm so grateful for the many times the Bible talks about the mercy of God. To be merciful is to show compassion to people in need. To be merciful is to meet human needs at a basic level. One time a religious leader came and talked to Jesus and asked him about inheriting eternal life. And Jesus simply turned to him and asked, well, what do you think? What does the law say? And the man quoted Deuteronomy chapter 5, saying, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your might, and your neighbor as yourself. Luke chapter 10 and verse 27. When Jesus said to him, Do this and you will live, the foolish man asked, Who is my neighbor? And after that, Jesus told the parable 
of the Good Samaritan. It's a story of how a Jewish businessman was beaten, robbed, and left to die on a desert road leading down to Jericho. In the story, a Samaritan showed mercy to the man who saved his life. It is a beautiful example of how to show mercy to a person who is a stranger to us. The Samaritan gave pure mercy, driven by compassion for real human need. And Jesus said, when we show mercy like that, we increase our capacity to receive mercy in our own time of need. But in the context of the Sermon on the Mount and the blessings of Jesus that we have been studying, the kind of mercy that Jesus is talking about is much deeper than mere human compassion. The kind of mercy that Jesus referred to is the gate that leads to forgiving people who have offended us. Mercy is the first step towards forgiving people from our heart. Jesus was particularly clear about this when he taught the disciples how to pray. Do you remember he taught them to say, forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who have sinned against us, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 12. And Jesus took this concept further by giving the parable of a man who owed 10,000 talents and was forgiven all. It's an unimaginable debt. Uh, However, the same man could not find it in his heart to show mercy to a man who owed him just 100 denera, a mere two or three months of work. Jesus said to him, should you not have had mercy on your fellow servant as I had mercy on you, Matthew chapter 18 and verse 33. Uh, Jesus ended the parable by saying that our forgiving needs to come not just from our lips, but from our heart. And so also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart, Matthew chapter 18 and verse 35. This past week I've been in D.C., Washington, D.C., attending two meetings focused on religious persecution and the need for mercy to be shown for people. Uh, Two stories in particular touched my heart. The first is the story of persecution of the followers of Jesus in Nigeria. We've been discussing Nigeria for many years at the Religious Freedom, International Religious Freedom Roundtable. It's just heartbreaking to see what is happening in Nigeria. More Christians have been killed in Nigeria in the last 10 years than any other place in the world. It is the most dangerous country for Christians at the present time. We listened to the story of how a pastor was killed by Boko Haram late night. One night there was a a skirmish and noise in the village and the pastor got up to see what was happening and before long uh, he had been killed. And the Lord was merciful to his wife helping her to continue to live for her children and to help the church that her husband had established. One could see the radiance of Jesus in her face. It was almost startling to be confronted by this powerful testimony. In his mercy, Jesus helped her smile. And what a joy it was to see the smile on her face. When she was asked, if the one who killed your husband visited you what would you do? And she said, if he wanted to come in, I would take him into my home. If he wanted something to eat, I would give him and fix something for him to eat. If he wants to lay down, I would give him a place to sleep in my home. This is mercy beyond human understanding. What a gracious lady this person is. The second story is a sobering message that came to us from the current president of Rwanda, the Honorable Paul Kagame. He was a former commander of the Rwandan Patriotic Front. He was deeply involved in the Rwanda genocide. Finally, he gave orders to his men to just stop killing people. He spoke about the challenge of putting together a broken country, ruined lives, and helping the survivors somehow make a living and come back and and stay in their country. 
And in the end, when people had no homes, no families, no money, and no way to move forward, the only thing they had left to give was to forgive. It is all that they could do. The merciless killings came to an end. The mercy was the gateway to forgiving and the key to rebuilding the nation of Rwanda. In the invitation to, the, to this weekend's sermon, I put a link to his message on Rwanda Day, uh, giving his uh, testimony. Matthew chapter 9, we read about Jesus healing a paralyzed man and then calling Levi to follow him. It's a great story. If you are lame or paralyzed, I release a healing presence of Jesus into your room right now. Be healed in Jesus' name. Now, these kinds of things infuriated re religious leaders in that day. And when I tell these kinds of stories to religious leaders around the world, they get equally furious with me that it's not me, it's the power of God flowing through my life. I release a touch, the power of God to you. Knowing this, Jesus, uh, knowing the hearts, that is, of the religious leaders who were furious, Jesus said to them, why do you think evil in your hearts? See, we have a hardness in our heart that God wants to soften. Mercy softens the hardness in our hearts. Jesus went on to say, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Aren't you so glad that includes me? I'm so glad Jesus came for me. I wasn't in the other group. I wouldn't have qualified. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 13, powerful words. And from what Jesus said, we discover that there is a process to go through in learning how to show mercy. Our natural tendency is to condemn rather than to show mercy. And it's not until we experience the mercy of God in our lives that we are able to release his mercy to others. People coming in to the message of Jesus are so grateful to have that burden of guilt and ought and should lifted off of their shoulders to find a loving, wonderful relationship with the heavenly Father. When we struggle to show mercy, we manifest that we've not sufficiently understood our own spiritual poverty Beatitude number one, when we have not sufficiently mourned for our brokenness. Beatitude number two, we struggle to show mercy. When the wildness in us has not been broken so that all the strength that's in us is released for the purposes of the kingdom of God. Next beatitude, when we've not adequately hungered for God, all of these things limit our ability to experience and to release mercy. And while the blessings of Jesus are available to all of us, many of us are living below our potential and not living in the blessings that Jesus has made available to us in these messages or, or, an, or a, a desire of my heart to pull you into a deeper encounter and experience with the blessings of Jesus in your own life. Many love uh, the psalmist, uh, Psalm of David and Psalm 28 he said, blessed be the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my pleas for mercy. And whenever you cry out to God for mercy, he doesn't turn down his earring. He turns up his hearing. He tunes into you to hear your cry. A cry for mercy is never gone unanswered by the heavenly Father, no matter where you are and what your circumstances. Cry out to God for mercy. He is a merciful God. And he will extend his mercy in a way that you can feel it, experience it in a tangible kind of way. David cried out to the Lord and received mercy. And we are invited to extend mercy to those who have offended us. Jesus showed mercy to the demonized man from Gadara. The man said to Jesus, please let me come with you. I, I want to go and be a part of all that you are doing and Jesus wisely knew it wasn't good for that man to do that at that moment. And he simply said to him, go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has shown mercy on you. Mark chapter 5 and verse 19. You know, this is the best example of what it means to share our faith, to simply tell people 
what God has done for us and how we have experienced his grace and blessing and mercy in our lives. When Paul was talking to Titus about how to share the message of Jesus, here's a great statement for us to even memorize and have in our hearts. He saved us, not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, that is the mercy of God, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. It takes the Holy Spirit to renew our minds, to cause us to think the way God thinks, to be able to say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. To have the radiance of this testimony, this amazing follower of Jesus in Nigeria, welcoming in those who have been so destructive in her life. It is a testimony to the power of Jesus, the washing of regeneration, to cleanse a country so divided by racial genocide, to build, rebuild and become the nation that it is today. The Holy Spirit is ready to wash the hardness out of our hearts and fill us with the compassion of Jesus. Peter gave us these wonderful words, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Our friend watching this week who had a dream saw that Jesus is alive. You could tell just in how he wrote, a whole new world had opened to him, a new understanding of the grace and mercy of God. We extend that invitation to you to see what that man sees, to see that there is a living hope in Jesus and it is the great mercy of God that brings that living hope into our lives. We invite you today to the living hope that is offered to all by the mercy of God. We invite you to experience a spiritual rebirth that Jesus offered. We're born again to a living hope. It begins with asking Jesus to forgive you for all of the sins that you have committed. Say with me, Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me in my place on the cross and paying for all of my sins. I receive you as my Savior today. Take the hardness out of my heart and fill me with mercy and compassion. Allow me to experience the blessing of having your mercy wash over my life. Now, we, Jesus, we ask you to fill with your Holy Spirit those who have prayed with me today. Now spend time reading his word and enjoying his presence. You receive Jesus as your savior today. Write to me and tell me about your decision to follow Jesus. If you were healed, write to me and let me know what God has done for you. Next week, we'll continue studying the blessings of Jesus. Father, thank you for the mercies you give to us every day. Help us to offer mercy and kindness to others even to those who offend or harm us. Let our lives demonstrate that you are a God of mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.